in the lobby there at the church for free gift. Our Connect card can be found on the website and off at the Welcome Center. We'd like to connect with you. So if you're here today, if you would complete one of those, either, uh, like we said, in the, in the lobby area or online, just help us to know that you are here. We thank you so much. For, uh, for the offering, many of you have been so generous. Thank you as well for that. You can place your offering in the black box there on the wall in the evening, or you can mail a check, or you can give online at claireaog.com. Thank you very much. So today, King and Kids have their Christmas party downstairs right now, it says. So if you are kindergarten through sixth grade, head downstairs, and I think some people might down need that done already, for a cookie decorating contest, awesome games, celebration, lots of fun. So excited for that. Let's talk into the next year, Wednesday nights. As you know, normally we have Wednesday service at 6.30. But for the next two weeks, instead of uh, service on the Wednesday nights, we've got service on Wednesday We've got service on, there you go, Thursday night of this week and Thursday night of the next week. This week, we've got a Christmas Eve service from 7 to 8 p.m. We love that time. It's Christmas, Christmas carols and communion. And those of you watching online today, too, we welcome you. And we'll show our Christmas Eve service online as well. And then the following Thursday is New Year's Eve. And this year we're going to have a time of testimony and just sharing good reports. How many of you want to hear good reports? Starting 6.30 on that New Year's Eve time. And then our young people are having a, their New Year's Eve party from 8 p.m. to 1 a.m. at Matthew. So lots of fun things happening. Uh, you know that we're doing our walk through Bethlehem. Last night was a great hit. We're doing it one more time tonight from 6 to 8 p.m. at the corner of Colonville and, and Clare Avenue, or Old 27. So come on out and uh, share the good news with others. Exciting opportunities. Also, we're excited that we have a couple checkup. It's a resource for married couples. You'll be hearing more about that, some things that we can do online. And I did want to sow a, a seed for our Sunday school. We're taking a break during the month of December, but we'll start again on January 10th and we're doing the Bible Engagement Project. We're digging a little bit deeper into God's Word. We'll also have an online Zoom Sunday School class starting on January 10th as well. And you folks online can uh, dig deep into God's Word with us. So thanks so much. Hey, I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Scott. I think he's going to pray for us. What a lovely opportunity we have to share God today. Amen. Um, hey, just want to welcome you all. It's great to be together today. And uh, as Lisa mentioned, wonderful night last night. I'm, I'm told that there were nearly 500 folks that drove through in our walk through Bethlehem. So we're that church that goes after really big things for Jesus, and uh, we're excited uh, about that. So also, tomorrow night, you may not have heard, uh, is the Great Conjunction, also called the Christmas Star. It happens every 400 years that Saturn and Jupiter come in line together. So tomorrow night at sunset, you can look out and uh, and see this happening to the west so go for it but i think it's a great kind of way to to enter into christmas and to kick off the new year because it's kind of like god is saying hey uh, i got this and you're okay and all that kind of great stuff and if you do the math uh, five of those 400 years does kind of take us back to that very first christmas so uh, let's pray together let's enter and let's worship him and Let's go to him in prayer. Lord, we thank you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the privilege of uh, coming together to worship you. We thank you that we're, we have opportunities in-house, in and uh, we're also, Lord, uh, live streaming. And so we just give you thanks and honor and glory. And, Lord, because we uh, have Eliezer, the innkeeper, here today, we pray that folks would be stirred to share and post and text an invite to someone. And, God, we... We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and mercy. And, Lord, a special blessing, Lord, uh, this Christmas for those that have lost loved ones recently or those who may be alone, kids that uh, have kind of been in school, out of school, in school, and may have some anxiety about that. We just pray that we would bring all of our needs before the, the cross and the hope of Jesus. We give you praise and honor. In your awesome name we pray. Amen. Hey, let's stand and enter in and bless him. God bless. Sing this out, church. Sing, pour out your fervor. Pour out your fervent praise. There's a song to raise like a banner. Lift up, lift up your grateful heart to the
Thank you, Lord, that you are a good, good Father, Lord. We can rely on you, God. We can trust in you, Father. Just help us to focus on that this morning, God. And I heard a thousand stories of what they think your life, but I heard the tender whisper of love. In the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleasing, and I'm never alone. Sing this out. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am, it's who I am. See, I've seen, yeah, I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know 
Sing, you are perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. So you come, you know,
You're worthy, Jesus. Just want to adore you, God. We love you, Lord. We love you, Father. Sing this out. Sing old things pass away. Done. 
just thank you for today father we do thank you god that we can just come together here lord and just freely worship you god just open up our hearts today lord help us to receive from you god help us to put any distractions in our life aside god and just focus in on you lord again god we thank you for this time lord and we thank you lord in jesus name amen So I uh, want to give you a kind of a really neat story that happened last night. Uh, well, it kind of was happening throughout the week that I, I drove over to where we're doing our drive through Bethlehem. Earlier this week was just checking out things. And I see this little plow that's there. And it kind of like, but nobody was on it. A little kind of mini plow. And, I'm, I, and I drove through the route and came back. And then I see that they're plowing. And it turned out that it was one of the city workers uh, who actually is our neighbor, lives just a couple houses down from the church, and he just wanted to come out and on his own basically plow out everywhere where the people were going to be. And I just thought that was really cool. Well, then he came through the drive last night, and so I got to thank him. But there's all kinds of little things, the way, way, ways in which God is blessing and showing up. And uh, so tonight will be our, our final uh, of the drive through Bethlehem. We're really excited about that. Tomorrow night, I mentioned this when we started, that tomorrow night is the Christmas star <laughs> done by none other than God himself, uh, that Jupiter and Saturn come in a line. This happens once every 400 years. And some say that that could be the actual Bethlehem star, which is really kind of fascinating. And it leads right into what I'll be talking about today. 
that uh, the Magi sought him. And our series is Home for the Holy Days. And so, friends, like, everybody's got a story this year, right, that something happened at Christmas where you want to be with someone or you want to be home or you want to go home or whatever. And the fact is that Jesus left home so you could find home. Isn't that true? And so we're talking about the Magi sought home and we're just, uh, we're just thanking the Lord. So we're, we're going to go to uh, the Matthew, the Magi story in Matthew's gospel, and l- let's go there. But let's celebrate him, and let's remember um, that awesome, awesome sacrifice that uh, God gave to his people. Rabbi, Rabbi, uh, good Rabbi, I'm so sorry that I'm late. Uh, uh, Can I help you, sir? You seem a little confused. You seem ca- a little I, I, bit mixed I, I, up. I, 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 this is not the temple. Of this Heinz. is this is church. We're having church right now. You just kind of walk. You're in. having church here. This we're place. we're having church. You just sort of uh, walked I'm in. I'm supposed to be at Temple Lachaim. Uh, Where is that? Uh, 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 here somewhere. I'm I'm not. Can sure you guys break you know? out your GPS and find the Temple Lachaim? Did I did I get that right? Yeah, but you, you made can. a mess on the stool. Oh, oh <laughs> well. <laughs> May God have mercy on me. Well, we're having, we're kind of doing oh. church right now, so um, I, we could, we'd be happy this. to. I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I, I'll be leaving here. I, I was going to go to Temple Chaim and tell my story. Of, oh, excuse me. My name is Eliezer, the keeper of Everybody the Everybody say, hi, Eliezer. Such an obedient crowd. Wonderful. Uh, so but I was supposed to tell my story. I, I'll be leaving now. At the uh, Temple Chaim. Well, wait, wait a minute. Since you're here... Wouldn't you guys like to hear Eleazar's story oh. since he's here? He's here and everything. Oh, no, I couldn't do that. <laughs> so next week, come back and we'll talk about the Magi saw him. I'm just going to, I'm going to bump my message, Eleazar, well, to next week. As long as you're okay. You're not coming next week too, right? <laughs> okay, let's give it up for Eleazar and no, let's thank, thank him. Much. Yeah, we want to hear your story. Miriam is telling me I'm getting too old for this. Uh, I'm sure you're wondering why I didn't take Mary and Joseph into the inn that night. I'd be glad to tell you my side of the story. No doubt, I think it's strange and shocking that Jesus was born in my stable, not in my inn. But don't blame me. I, I, how could I have known? Oy vey. How could known who it was that night. (laughs) Let's just hold on for a minute. Back up with me. Cold December night in Bethlehem. There I was, one of the youngest innkeepers of the country, and in charge of the inn in Bethlehem. Try to put yourself in my place. You have to put yourself in my place. Two of you, some of you, could put yourself in my place. You'll get that later on tonight at supper. Until the time of the census, I had never experienced an overcrowded inn. For years, I could barely keep the inn open. Well, you see, from a business point of view, Bethlehem is backwater. Jerusalem is only six or seven miles away. Most visitors who come to Bethlehem stay with relatives. Ah, you're wondering about my accent. I'm from Brooklyn. (laughs) That makes me a New York Jew. But many nights we only had cockroaches and spiders in the inn. But then the census came. I found myself with more business than I could handle, sir. You see... Caesar Augustus had decreed that every man was to be compelled to return to his home city of birth. Bethlehem being a very old settlement, why, we had people coming to us from every side. Let's see now. I had uh, Malchus, whom Augustus had sent to us. And then there was uh, Jonas, a rich man of Tiberias, who had come to be enrolled his birth as well. There were also some from the palace. Why, with all these very important people, they the inn. Even my servants had to give up their quarters to make room for some of the guests. 
My, some of these people had traveled for days. And besides that, there was this thing of taxation. You know, we hate that sort of thing. In fact, I'd like to meet the man who doesn't react against taxation. Oh, I'm sorry. There were so many times that Caesar had imposed taxes on our business that we, we nearly had to shut it down. I mean, I have to admit that our accommodations weren't first class, but we were helping as many people as we could. They weren't that bad either, I must say. But when the census came, we had people jammed in everywhere. Now, I had already hung out the no vacancy sign, as well as told several that the inn was just full up, and they would, they would simply have to make other arrangements. And then, oy vey, came this Joseph and his young wife. Sure, I could see her condition. I have eyes. I am not blind. Quite evident that she needed the room and a bed of rest, but what could I do? I had no idea how close she was. And Joseph poured out their need. I can still hear the urgency of his voice. But, I mean, could I tell my Lord Malchus to go to the stalls of the cave? Do you think I could have the knife to tell Jonas, a man used to nothing but the very best, to go and sleep with a cattle? I, I had the reputation of the end to think of. How would I ever get any more business if the word got out? But Elie, keeper of the inn of Bethlehem, sends the kings of this world, well, like Malchus and Jonas, to go out and sleep with a cattle. <laughs> well, that'd go over real big, huh? 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 Uh, I'd be out of business in no time. And besides, Mary and Joseph, I did not... You see, they went to the cave when I told them there was absolutely no room in the inn. Oh, yes, perhaps I did speak sharply to them, but only after Joseph was so presumptuous enough to suggest that I give the one last private room that I had, the, the, the one that my wife and our little baby boy was occupying, and besides. Demanding that, clamoring for comforts that I did not have to offer. They had me on the run all the time. Nevertheless, I didn't know her time was so near. How could I have known? And, and, and if I had known, what could I have done? The inn was full up. I had no room. When I went out to make my rounds and shut the gate before going to bed, that I saw a, a dim light in the mouth of the cave. For the moment, I thought of going out to see how they were, but there was nothing more. It wasn't the best. It was better than nothing. Hope that they would now just leave me alone. Uh, I had hardly put my head on the pillow when there was this banging on the door. And after what I had been through, this was almost too much for me. I was tempted to let them hammer until they got tired and leave. Uh, but it was no use, no. They were so persistent that they woke everyone up in the place. Soon there were shouts from all sides. Go out and deal with who's ever at the door. Oh. So I got out of bed and I went to the door. Do you know what I found at the door? Hmm? 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 I opened the door and there they were. A bunch of dirty, smelly, and most unintelligent, I might add, shepherds. <laughs> now, a pregnant woman was one thing, but now smelly shepherds? Oh, they were all excited, all trying to talk, talk at the same time. It took me a while to make out what they wanted. They said 
that they angels who told them that the long awaited that night and the angels had directed them to my inn. My inn! <laughs> of all the... Th my inn? Brother, I had always questioned the intelligence of shepherds. This removed all of my doubts. Just get lost in the night. Oy. Well, to make sure of their leaving, I went to watch out the window. But instead of their leaving, they started up. These men, any farther than I can throw them, or throw you, I was afraid they might harm some of my livestock or take some of my grain for their animals. So I got ready and I went outside and I headed for the cave to find out what they were up to. It was then that I saw the strangest sight of my life. I wiped my eyes to make sure that I was really seeing what I was really seeing. There was this beautiful glow. I wasn't sure it was coming from the torch inside of the cave or what, but it was sort of a bright yet calming light coming from the cave. The animals were all surprisingly calm. I mean, normally with all that activity and all the people rushing around by them, they, they would have been all over the place, but no. They were quiet and calm. And if I didn't know any better, it seemed as though they were all They, they, they were not moving this toward the manger as if to eat. They, they just stood there and appeared to all be looking in that direction. And there in the light of the flickering torch that burned inside of the cave, I saw this man Joseph. For the moment, I had forgotten all about them being there. But... Joseph was standing there silent. His rugged features were lit with emotion. And, and down below where he was standing, on a bed of straw lay his young wife. And on her face you could see both the expressions of pain and joy. And just above her in the manger was a newborn baby. And then and it was almost as if this beautiful light or the glow from the manger. Oh, surely I was dreaming. <laughs> then I looked over and I saw the shepherds and I knew. These rough, crude, smelly shepherds were not. As if, as if they were worshiping God. And there, there, there they were. They remember I stepped back into the shadows and I waited for them to go by saying one said he was anxious hurry and tell the wonderful things he had seen that night to which another mentioned more specifically the hearing and the seeing of angels and then one of the oldest shepherds said 
Fellas, we have seen this one who is greater than the angels. We have seen our king. We have seen him. Let's tell others the good news that the Messiah is here. The Messiah? I had yearned for the Messiah. Just as Israel had yearned for Canaan. Oh, you know that. But when he came, he must be great. He would destroy the temples of Rome and bring power to Jerusalem. He would deliver Israel and the world from Tiberias. He would even be greater than Isaiah. He would break the yoke of bondage. How he would come, I didn't know. But one thing I knew for sure. He would not be born in a place meant for barnyard animals. Oh, I was angered by their body at first. But then I was too tired to argue. A few hours, I found myself busy once again, trying to please my many guests. What to happen to those strange parents and their little baby? Well, the years seemed to fly by. My business at the inn seemed to prosper, and all was well. Thirty years must have sped by. And one day I went up to Capernaum to visit a friend whom I hadn't seen in some time. As I came into town, I saw a rather large crowd gathering by the square. I into the crowd, and there she was. Thirty years had passed since I'd looked on that face, but I still knew it. Still beautiful with the purity of motherhood, still half sad and half joyful. And, and by her side was a strong man of striking countenance. Why, he had the gracious bearing of a prince. And as soon as I heard them say he was her son, I needed to hear no more. I knew that he was the babe that had slept in my cave. And their face. Well, suddenly he looked at me, and I, sh I shrank back. I, I was afraid. I... A terrible scene that night. And then suddenly a young man rushed. Lord, I will follow thee wheresoever thou goest. Well, he looked at the man with a smile of understanding on his face. And when he opened his mouth to speak, it was, it was as though he was speaking to me. The foxes have holes. The birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Oh, his answer was to another man's statement, but, but it cut deep into my own heart. I couldn't stand. I knew he had spoken to another man. I, I knew, too, that I was the first one to turn him out. I never forgot him or those words that he spoke that day. Well, later that same day, we went down by the sea. All of a sudden, a storm came up from nowhere. It was uh, one of these, uh, how do you say, humdingers. This young prince of a man I saw down by the water get into a boat with several of his friends and go off into the sea. Well, my friends and I were dining, reclined back, watching the beautiful day, and all of a sudden the storm had come up, and all I could think about was this young man and his friends out in the boats. 
And then in... in clouds, why they, they dispersed and parted. The wind, it, it, it practically ceased instantly. I watched in awe as the waves just rolled down into a calm, something like So I took his answer to be no, he'd never seen something like this before. Well, as the others were turning aside, I looked, and there, there it was, the tiny little boat making its way back into shore. And everyone was on board. That was a day that I will never forget easily. And that it must have been about three years. I went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. Now I almost wish that I had not gone. I made my way into the city as I had done so many times before, only this time. There was a different feeling in the air. There was a big commotion down by the center. That I could hardly get through it. It it seems as though everyone was going mad, and then all of a sudden, there he was. I saw him again. They were driving him out of the city. I really wasn't too sure. At first, it was him. Oh, the awful sight of it all. I sh it, sh it shall never leave my heart or my mind. On his head was a wounding crown of thorns. The blood ran down from the top of his head all the way down through his beard and his sweaty body. His, his face was black and blue from the beatings. His back had been beaten with a lash. And on his shoulder, very heavy. Yes, it was him. It was him. My heart flamed in Oh, my Lord, my Lord that I should have been the first to drive him out. three years earlier. Well, a few days followed that awful event. I sought out the woman they call this mother of Jesus, Mary. My heart was overwhelmed as she told me what had happened to her and to Joseph before they arrived at my inn. Oh my, what a story that it was. But I must tell you today, I became a believer. I think it might have been in my house where he saw the light for the first time of this life. But no, no, it was in my cave. The rude, uncultured shadows were there before I reached him. They will be remembered long after I am forgotten. 
and the wise men from among the Gentiles. They worshipped him before how. But they will be named in connection with his birth long after I, a son of Israel, a kinsman, if you please, am forgotten. So, my stable is more honored than my home. My manger will be held in sacred memory instead of my bed in my house. Shepherds will have the names mentioned in song. And the strangers from among the Gentiles will be lauded for their faith, while I, I, the innkeeper of Bethlehem, old Eleazar, will be remembered only in cold scorn. Well, because there was no room in my inn. In my inn. Now let me ask you a question. If this were his birth, instead of his birthday, what would you do? Would you have any room? I beseech you, dear people, this day. Do not do as old Eliezer did and drive him from your heart's door. The holy word says that the Messiah, Yeshua, he stands at our heart's door and he knocks and he bids entrance into your heart. Will you let him? Will you open your door of your heart and let him in? It would be the greatest event of your life, I can promise you. Maybe at one time you did this long ago, but you find yourself today crowding him out of your heart. Do not just give him a room in your heart. No, no. But give him your whole heart. Every room inside of your heart this day. And I can guarantee you this. Your life will never be the same. May I have the privilege of praying for you, dear people. Great Hova, Yahweh Elohim, we come before your presence this day. Thank you, dear God, for these precious friends who are here to hear my story. I pray this day that we all open our hearts and bid you entrance, not to just a room, but to our whole whole heart. Hallelujah. Be blessed, we pray, this day, Yeshua, our Messiah. We give you the praise and we give you the glory because you are Yamashiach. Amen. Thank you, dear people, for allowing me to to share the story. Do you hear something? I am thinking, I'm hearing Miriam calling me. Miriam is calling me. It's not good. Uh, thank you, thank you, my friend. Uh, yes, oh, you know. I'm coming. I'm coming. Thank you, Eliezer. Wonderful job with that. So a couple really profound things that he said. What if this were his birth and not his birthday, how would we respond? And I love that little thought that uh, have we given Jesus a room in our heart or given him our whole heart? I was thinking about this thought uh, when we reflect on this past year and, and there are friends, family uh, that have really been through a lot uh, met, some people have been through an incredible incredibly uh, difficult year and so it, it brings that question Lord why is there suffering on the earth and I think let's back up the question a little bit Lord what makes you suffer 
why have you suffered, Lord? I think Eleazar did a fabulous job of tying Christmas into Good Friday and the thought that it was, it was my sin, right, that uh, brought him to the cross. It's like that great classic of Rembrandt where he pictures, the artist Rembrandt does the cross and he paints himself in the crowd or if you prefer the Passion of the Christ Mel Gibson's hand is there while they're nailing the nails. Same idea. And so the biblical view, the view of the Bible, is that it's my sin. And so sometimes when we come to Christmas, oh, I've, I've heard that before. You know, I've been through how many Christmases. And we miss the very thing that God is wanting to do in our heart, that he wants to bring the story afresh and anew in a powerful, life-changing way. I kind of think Eleazar nailed it because I think that we, uh, we say, Jesus, come over to this part. Help me, help me pay my bills, you know, bless my family, have everything go well in my life, but I, I, I don't want to give you, it's kind of like how we have a room in our, uh, are, am I the only one that has a room that if you showed up at my door, we wouldn't necessarily let you into one or two rooms in the house that aren't as presentable. Am I the only one? I think that in life, that's kind of a metaphor of how we live. We want God to move in this part, but, but I got this, Lord. I, I'm taking care of this. And when we say that, we're, we're not. We're, we're full of pride. We're, maybe we're full of unforgiveness. Maybe we've allowed cynicism uh, to creep in. And so, friends, uh, I believe that you're not here by accident, that God brought you here this day and to see one another as a community of faith and to worship the Lord and to sing. You know, there are churches that have, like, banned singing, which I think is really a shame. So um, let the redeemed of the Lord say so and let everyone know his breath praise the Lord. But when you think about L.A.'s, our story, and he's acting. Somebody asked me if that was really him after first service. He's an actor, right? He's acting. But the words of Jesus, you know, Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And that pierced his heart. God wants to move that way in our lives all the time. Heart-piercing truth that would kind of bring us to our knees. And so my real question for you as we finish out is, yeah, have we given Jesus everything? And, and we tend to hear that question as a salvation thing, maybe. It's so much deeper than that. It's are we welcoming the Lord into every area of our life? And I think the vast majority of us, there's things we hold back. Will you give him the hold back today? <laughs> Will you give him that messy, messy spot in your life uh, that you don't want anyone to know about? And God will take it and transform it and change it. I think Christmas, whatever's there, Christmas, Thanksgiving, it tends to bring up whatever's on the surface. And so when, and certainly this Christmas, right? And so if there are stresses, if there are challenges that are already there, it, it reminds us. If we have lost loved ones, we think about them more uh, at this time. We can look at that with, with sadness or sorrow, or we can look at it in a totally different way. That God is, as it says, and Elias are quoted in Revelation 3.20, that Jesus is knocking on the door of our hearts saying, give me this part of your brokenness and give me this disappointment and, and turn over this cynicism to me. And Paul, the apostle, would write, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift, right? And that's uh, Christmas, it's also Easter, it's both. My passionate heart's desire is that we would give Jesus the messy part of our lives in this moment. Maybe it's anxiety. We've kind of, there's so many diagnoses in the, in the psychological handbook that there's an ism for everything which can go the direction of, well, let's go, let's go that way to get better. As, and I'm not downing that, but let's go that way to get better instead of trusting Jesus with our struggle and our battle. 
whatever it is, everybody has a messy. Let's bring that messy to Him. Will you stand to your feet with me today? Let's bow our heads before the Lord. Father, we cry out to you. Lord, we thank you for the wonderful music that touched our heart. We thank you for the, the great play that you put on Dean Elliott's heart that he wrote and brought to us today. Eliezer, the innkeeper. And I have this sense in my heart, God, that you're stirring us that we would ask you for a special Christmas miracle, Lord God, that there's something profound and powerful that you want to do in our lives. Friends, you're here today and you're just asking God to show up to bring that miracle of Christmas to you. We're fresh and anew this year. Hold up a hand high in the house today. Yes, yes. Others here, I believe that God's tugging at your heart in this moment, that we all have a messy, we have, we maybe let Jesus into certain parts, but not everything. We hold on to this part that we say we got this or we understand it, and really we're responding in our own maybe pridefulness, maybe brokenness, maybe cynicism, as we said. You, friend, you want to give the messy part of life over to Jesus and that he would take it and transform it. It is something uh, wonderful. Just lift up a hand. Hide that your heart's cry today. I want to pray for the Lord's blessing and favor. And Let's pray together, and there'll be uh, those who are at this altar that will pr be available to pray with you if you so desire. We, there's no pressure there. Lord God, we pray, Lord, for that Christmas miracle, Lord God that miracle of the very first Christmas, Lord God, that you would cause God to be born in a humble stable, Lord, as a baby. Lord, what an awesome miracle. And we pray, God, that you do it again. We pray for everyone in the house, Lord, particularly those that stretched up their hands a moment ago, needing that Christmas miracle. And we pray that you would come. Lord, we bring the messy part of our life to you as well. Lord, maybe it's that peace that uh, we don't fully trust you. Maybe it's, it's our own brokenness. Maybe it's addictive behavior that we know is not pleasing in your sight. Maybe it's uh, a strange relationship. Lord God, bring, we bring that to you. We bring our messy to you. And as Eliezer talked about, Lord God, that the, the whole of our heart, would you touch it and not just a room? May we make room for you in our heart, Lord God, in every part of our heart. Father, we give you praise, and we honor you, Jesus, and we lay all before your awesome and wonderful throne. In the great name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I wonder if we could...